What's up, everybody? In the last lesson, we talked about how to identify key signatures, specifically for flats. And in this lesson, we're gonna talk about how to write or construct key signatures when we're given just the name of the key and a blank staff. The most important thing that we need to know is the order of flats. Remember, for both sharp and flat key signatures, there's a specific order that the flats or sharps always get written in. And we've been using a specific phrase to remember this order. For sharps, that order was Father Charles goes down and ends battle. And for flats, we just flip that order around and we say battle ends and down goes Charles's father. So when the flats get written on the staff, they will always go in this order. B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat, F flat. Flats always appear in the key signature in that order. So if we only have two flats, the order is going to be B flat, E flat. You won't see any flats besides that when there's only two flats. If there are four flats in the key signature, you're always going to see B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat in that order. Now, remember the general rule for flat key signatures is that the penultimate flat or the second to last flat is the name of the key. So let's take this key signature, for example. If the penultimate flat is the name of the key, then that means that this second to last flat here is the name of the key. Well, this second to last flat is E flat. We know that for two reasons. Number one, it's on the E flat space. If I were to put a note right here, this note would be E flat. We also know this because it is the second flat represented here. We've got one, two, three flats from left to right. The second flat will be E flat because the flats have to go one, two, three. So if the penultimate flat is the name of the key and the penultimate flat is E flat, then the name of the key must be E flat major. So now what if somebody gave me a blank staff and told me write the key signature for E flat major from scratch. So I've got my treble clef here. I'm trying to write the key of E flat major and I know that the penultimate flat is the name of the key. Well, the name of my key is E flat major. So my second to last flat has to be E flat. So let's start with the first flat. I know that I'm gonna need B flat because that's first and then E flat. Well, I've just hit my second to last flat, so I must just need one more flat, and that gives me A flat. One other thing that we need to remember when writing flats on the staff is our rule for placing flats, and that is that the flats go on the highest place on the staff below the top F. So that means that I'm gonna put the E flat up here instead of down here on this E, and that's because it needs to be on the highest place on the staff below the top F, which is this line right here. Let's try another example. I have just been asked to construct the key of D flat major. Well, if the penultimate flat is the name of the key, then I know that D flat must be the penultimate or second to last flat. So we're gonna start writing flats in the order of flats until we hit D flat. So we'll go from the beginning, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, well, I've just hit the name of the key. If this is the second to last flat, then one more brings me to G flat. And once again, our rule for placing flats is that they go on the highest place on the staff below this top F line. Let's look at another example, woo! What about C flat major? The penultimate flat is the name of the key, so the second to last flat must be C flat. Let's start writing flats until we get to C flat. Battle ends and down goes Charles's. That is the name of the key, the second to last flat, so our final flat must be F or father. Once again, we have to put this F flat here on the space because we are placing the flats on the highest place on the staff below the top F. That means we can't be on the F line, we have to be below it, so we get this F down here. Let's look at one more trickier example, and that is the key of F major. We know that the penultimate flat is the name of the key, and so normally we would get to that flat and we would add one more. But if we start here at F and we try to go one more, where do we end up? Well, I guess in a way we could go right back around to the beginning, except in this case, we only have one flat, and that flat is B flat. 
we wouldn't write all of the flats and then add B flat again. Instead, we're just going to write B flat. F major is a good key to just memorize that it's only got one flat in it. And although the penultimate flat idea still does work, we just kind of go back around to the beginning. It's often easy to just remember that F major has one flat, B flat. It's the first flat. It's always going to be B flat because we always go in that order. So if you can just remember that general rule, the penultimate flat is the name of the key, then that's going to help you both in identifying and constructing key signatures from scratch.